IS21 deals with foreign currency transactions. Now, most companies will produce their accounts in their functional currency, which is the currency of the primary economic environment in which they engage in. For most people, that is the country in which they're registered. So a UK listed company will prepare their accounts in pounds, a US listed company in dollars and so on. Now, in a global economy, you'll still have many transactions in different currencies. That could be buying and selling goods in different currencies, obtaining finance in different currencies. And it could also be that you own other companies that prepare their accounts under different currencies. Now, that element we're not going to look at. That's going to be dealt with in consolidations. We're going to look at individual transactions. So let's say you're a company that produced their accounts in euros. You make a big $50 million sale to a, a client in America on credit. When you make that $50 million sale, you record that amount in euros, in revenue and receivables. If that client pays you 60 days later, they will pay you $50 million. But you need to translate it again at that date into euros. But obviously in the 60 day in, in between period, there will have been a movement in the currency exchange rates. And that gain or loss goes to the statement of profit or loss. And because of that, companies are exposed to quite large gains and losses in their P&L. So what you find is a lot of companies will take out hedging arrangements using derivatives like forward contracts or future contracts, really to minimize the losses they will make on foreign exchange. That would also wipe out any large gains they could make, but really firms are doing it as a risk management tool to minimize those losses. So in modern businesses, if you look at the foreign exchange disclosures, you will often see huge amounts of talking about hedging and which countries they're really concerned by and therefore have hedged against. 